G'day buddies, Jack Toro here. And on this channel, I focus on Australian Aborigines, their languages, cultures, history, eh, and so on. And it so happens that I did a few videos where I discussed compass points, cardinal directions, eh, and names for compass points in Australian Aboriginal languages. Well, I thought I cannot let this topic go without mentioning the language Gugu Yimitir, eh, which is quite famous, eh, and its speakers are quite famous in this context, as it so happens. This is a language from northeastern Queensland, a Pamanyungan language. Uh, and it, it is the language from which we get the word kangaroo. Now, uh, this language is famous for the fact that uh, it has the words north, south, east and west, but it does not have any words meaning right or left. So, in Gugu Yimitir, when talking about where something is in relation to something else, uh, you have to use these words. Uh, and as it so happens, the speakers of these, this language are famous for being really good uh, at telling where north is, where south is, uh, and so on even if it's cloudy and the sun is not out, or the moon and stars at night. Yes, so this Pamanyungan language is famous for this. Now, I'm sure some people will be disappointed to hear that many other Pamanyungan languages, in fact, both have words for right and left and make use of them uh, frequently. Now, perhaps this shouldn't be surprising, though, uh, if you read Levinson. This terminology here, by the way, is taken from Levinson et al. 2002 and Levinson 2003. If you read Levinson, uh, you can see there that neighboring and closely related languages often have different frames of reference, as Levinson calls these. Uh, and in fact, in, in Levinson 2003, he introduces what he calls a preliminary typology of frames of reference found in the world's languages. Uh, frames of reference that are, I quote, systematically distinguished in the grammar and lexicon of different languages, uh, unquote. So he introduces three frames of reference. We have the absolute one, where people make use of the words for the compass points then, when referring to where things are located in relation to other things. We have the relative frame of reference where the speaker is what is important and where the speaker happens uh, to be standing or sitting or whatever. Concerning the relative frame of reference, Levinson et al. Uh, in 2002 wrote the following Objects are located in terms of viewer centered coordinates based on body axes, as in the ball is to the left of the chair. This here is not Levinson, by the way. Uh, this, as it so happens, is the dissertation of a PhD student colleague uh, of mine. That is to say, she was a colleague when I was a PhD student. Uh, and the question that is in focus in this dissertation is 
do languages influence thought or not? In and of itself, a very interesting question, I think, but not one we are going to focus on today. So she refers to Levinson in here. So anyway, we have the absolute frame of reference and we have the relative frame of reference. Uh, and many Pamanyungan languages in Australia uh, make use of this frame of reference and definitely prefer it over the absolute one. So I have been in northwestern Western Australia to study Australian Aboriginal languages there. Uh, and we have examples from two uh, languages here on the board to neighboring languages in the northernmost part of the Pilbara region. So looking first at Ngara. Uh, this example here was one that my consultant found particularly funny. Uh, and the thing here is that we have Mayanyogarilu in two different functions, uh, which we can tell from the fact that lu here is glossed erg, ergative, eh, and here instrumental. Mayanyu is the word for right in the language, eh, and kadi is side locative, which is a locative uh, case they have which means to the side of, uh, on the side of, uh, and things similar to that. So, what do we have here? We have nyayin ko jara, ya jiri bula mere mere. Nyayi, the demonstrative for something that is close by. Ngo, ergative, and jara dual. And as I have explained in another video, the uh, Aborigines in this region who first saw white men writing thought it looked like they were sewing or stitching. Uh, and that is what this verb here means, yaji. So yajiri merimari. To sew on paper became lexicalized in the sense to write. So this means these two are writing. So here uh, these two constituents together make up the subject, which we can tell from the fact that they both take ergative uh, allomorphs. So nyayi again and mayanyukarilu. So this one on the right is what this means. Yajiri merimeri is writing mayanyukarilu. And this is an adverbial. Uh, I have mentioned elsewhere that. In Pamanyungan languages, ergative and instrumental allomorphs tend to be identical. There has been a long debate as to whether this means that there are two different cases uh, whose allomorphs just happen to be identical, or if there is one case used in two different functions. Uh, I prefer to stay out of that debate if I can. But anyway, the whole sentence means this one on the right is writing on the right or with the right. That is to say, with his right arm and or hand. Uh, that's what this means. And my consultant thought it was really funny that he could include Mayanyu Karilu in two different functions uh, in the same sentence. Here, 
uh, in this uh, lower sentence, we also get the Ngara word for left. Marjanyo. So Mayanyo and Marjanyo. This was uttered in a context where eating was in focus. So that is what this is all about. There are no verbs here. We have Nyayi Ngara, Marjanyu Gari. So this man uh, left side locative again, side locative being very common uh, with the words for right and left. So this should be taken to mean that this man is eating with the left. Nyaburi, on the other hand, who uttered this? Nyaburi, Maya Nyugari. Nyaburi was eating with the right. Yes, if we look at neighboring Nyangomada, we find something that seems to be common when you compare neighboring uh, Australian Aboriginal languages. It seems to be common that they have many of the same words, but often words have opposite meanings in the two neighboring languages being compared. I really don't know why that is, but that seems to be the case. So here in Nyangomada, Marjanyu means right. And the Nyangomada word for left, as it so happens, is Jambu which is also the common greeting in Swahili, the East African Bantu language, Jambu. That's just a coincidence, of course. Eh, but Jambu for left, as in, for example, Jambu Karija, Jambu Kariyara. Eh, side locative again, Kari. So this means go to the left. Well, Closely related and neighboring languages can make use of different frames of reference when referring to objects and where they are. So this shouldn't be surprising really. Sometimes this even happens within one and the same language as Levinson mentions and also my PhD student uh, colleague from Uppsala University. This is the case, for example, in Tamil. Perhaps this is interesting in this context. Tamil, an Indian language, in which urban speakers prefer the relative frame of reference, so right and left and so on, while rural speakers, so speakers out in the countryside, prefer an absolute frame of reference. But this is all for today, but as you know by now, I will be back. So, see you later.